Hey everybody, uh, today is the launch of the RTX 4090 in terms of availability, as in you can go in and buy one or online. Pretty much they're kind of sold out now, uh, unless you were very quick this morning. Not as bad as a 3090, you could definitely get them. Okay, um, so I picked up this 4090 non-OC from Micro Center. Uh, I always buy the non-OC because as I've explained before, when you pay that for the OC model these days, you're really just paying $200 for a BIOS flash. A BIOS flash that almost makes no difference now with NVIDIA Boost 2.0, since boost clocks on the box don't mean shit. It will pretty much boost as high as it can, as long as you have the power, as long as you have thermally controlled, and as long as your chip is good enough to go as high as possible, okay? So stop buying the OC models, you're really just you're throwing money away, okay? So, that said, for the guys that were behind me and in front of me that picked the tough OC while I took the non-OC voucher, um, sucks to be you, pretty much. Um, but you'll know for next time. So, in the box, uh, the same packaging as the 3090 Ti, by the way. Um, you get the uh, adapter, one to four, all right? 16 pin, let me just take this out here. Okay, so you get that. Tough Gaming, what is that, Velcro strap? That's new. Um, GPU stand, these also come with the motherboards. Um, this one's Tough branded though. I've never used them, but I assume they kind of just untwist, come up like, oh, I'm sorry, it's a screwdriver. Hmm, that's interesting. I guess it's a GPU stand slash screwdriver. Um, yeah, interesting. I don't know why you would need it to be a screwdriver, I guess to. I guess it's kind of cute, right? You can undo your case screws. Okay, so here's the card itself. It is probably the biggest tough uh, so far. Regular books and shit. Uh, file it to the side. Drop it on the floor, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let me lower this brightness here. Ooh, okay. So, um, I didn't take it out yet, but I can tell you, it's definitely a big card. I can only imagine how much larger the Strix is. And there you go. So you can see right away, the PCB ends right here. So all of this is part of the cooler. All right, so the card itself is only, let's see, if you were to water block this thing, you're looking at eight and a half inches, approximately. Okay, and if you want to know, I'm sorry guys, I don't have the millimeter ruler here. Uh, it's 13 and a half inches. All right. And let's see, this is, what is that? 3.5 slot? I think that's 3.5 slot. Uh, yeah, it's about 3.5. Okay, so looking around the card, we have a bow switch, performance mode, quiet mode, no difference outside of fan profile. Essentially what I would do is, I will flash the Tough OC BIOS onto one side, and I will flash the Strix BIOS onto the other side. For those that don't know, this PCB is very identical to the Strix PCB. It's essentially, it's the same PCB, but you can see right at the very top right here, where the soldering points are, that you're missing a phase right here. Okay, the Strix would have that. And I can see right here, down here, you can see already that it's missing two uh, that probably would be on the Strix. Yeah, I think these two would be on the Strix. Yeah, so that's one less here, two less here. So, other than that, you don't get the PWM headers that you would on the Strix for RGB, etc. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, those things don't really matter, right? So, stainless steel bracket as before. This design of the cooler is definitely different than the previous Tufts. I've been told that this is a vapor chamber now, so that it won't be as crappy as last time. Um, not just, you know, I won't say crappy, but it's more like disappointing, okay? So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm trying to find 4090 Strix BIOS right now. Uh, there are people with the cards. Um, hopefully I can get off someone. I don't know if MV Flash will work uh, with, 40 series. Usually it takes some time before hand, but um, we'll take a look. Okay guys, so I just wanted to
pause the video just to bring the 3080 Ti Strix into the picture here for a size comparison, okay? Uh, if you guys didn't know, the 3080 Ti Strix is pretty much the same size and length as the Founders Edition 3090. The 4090 Founders Edition, which I am trying to get my hands on one, is a little shorter than the 3090 Founders. So all that about huge 4090s not fitting your case, that's not the case, okay? The meme is that the whole giant Strix, all right? Every other card is big, but will fit, all right? So let's put the Strix aside. All right, so let me just um, speak about something before I take this card apart. Um, there is, uh, this generation, uh, there's a lot of lockdown on the PCB, okay? You'll notice every variant comes out as the same 16 pin. Okay, so you're gonna get the 600 watt theoretical max on all of AIB variants. The NVIDIA FE is drawing 600 watts. The Strix is drawing 600 watts. But this Tough is at a lovely 505, simply because it doesn't have a Strix BIOS on it yet. But what I'm speaking to is some of the other AIBs are still trying to sell, you know, uh, hold on one second, I'm gonna get a screwdriver here. So what I was saying was some of the IBs are still trying to sell these uh, different variants like the Supreme X and then the down the trio, just kind of like how Asus has the Strix and the Tough and they have like the Tough OC. And they're trying to um, kind of create these tiers of products, okay? I understand that the cooling may be different uh, in terms of what you get cooling wise, but it doesn't exactly justify the cost difference either. Because sometimes these variants, for example, the Trio versus the Supreme, I don't think it's that much, but like the Tough and the Strix, that can be as much as $400. And when NVIDIA has decided to not just go for like, you know, the base product like they used to with the founders uh, versus like, for example, uh, Superclocked from EVGA, they're now also going for the high end by limiting the power, right, design, and also because NVIDIA tends to keep the best dyes for themselves, right? I mean, it makes sense. And the NVIDIA cooler is extremely well fit and finish, okay? Much better than any other cooler that's out there in terms of just design. And for some coolers last generation, the 3090 Founders Edition cooler was much better than the, than the 3090 Strix. 3094 to win 3 um, I would say similar to the Supreme, okay? So when you have a better performing cooler and or similar performing cooler and you're charging the base price and now you have the same power limit, the chance of a better die, what's the point in buying a variant that has a $400 premium like the Strix? outside of maybe you like the look, maybe the Strix does perform better on air. I don't know, I don't have one yet. But I can say for models like the OC gaming, stuff like that, uh, I should probably be paying attention while I'm taking this apart, yeah. I think I may have some screws here I missed, yeah. For stuff like the OC gaming, you know, stuff like that, there's no point in buying those anymore. Literally zero point. Like when I look at the Palette Gaming Rock or this card or even the Supreme X, it has a maximum power draw of 550 watts. That's worse than the Founders Edition. The Founders Edition is a better overclocking card potential without mods. So why am I going to pay more for one? All right. And I think that's the question that probably caused EVGA to say, you know what? I don't want to do play this game anymore. And, you know, they're, 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 they have their right to leave the market. And, you know, there's got to be another screw under this back plate. Oh, uh, there's a screw right here. And I'm blind. There's too much screws. So, yeah, I would say for this generation, um, if you can get a Founders, get the Founders. Don't even bother buying the other stuff. I mean, if you're a big ROG fan, I mean, if you can get this one and you can flash the BIOS and you're okay with that, that's great. Um, but... You know, you're just paying more for less, and it doesn't even make sense to me. I mean, if you have a whole branding thing, I mean, okay, there's one more screw. Sorry, guys, I'm not, I'm just going off of, ooh, 
Okay, I'll pick that up later. I'm just going off of, you know, how these coolers usually come apart. So I'm finding additional attached points as I'm going. All right, so let's take a look here. It's gonna be, okay, so the shroud is coming off. It's gotta be an RGB cable somewhere here, right? Yeah, it's gotta be. All right, yeah, there we go. Okay, that's one. Always be careful when you're doing these things. That's two. So let's take a look at the fans. These fans are different. See, they're different, they're larger, right? Um, they're obviously replaceable. You know, there, there's definitely more money put into this cooler this time around. That's for sure. There's more money into it now. Okay, here's the heat sink. Nice and chunky. Guys, you know what? Give me one second to pick up that screw before I lose it. Okay, so I got the screw. All right, so this heatsink is definitely different than the previous 3090Ti one. Um, it's supposed to be a vapor chamber design like I've mentioned. And I'm thinking there's probably something under this back plate. There may or may not be. Alrighty, here we go. Not a bad paste job. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, it's kind of disappointing that I don't know. I mean, I wish we just gave, you know, at these price points, especially if you paid 1800 I think you should just have the one from the Strix and just have a different cover. Maybe, you know, the features like the um, PWM header that would go here, the RGB that's on the Strix, you know, just leave those out, but give us the same thing. You know, just let's not have the fancy ROG stuff. Let's just have this. In fact, this time, I think this looks a lot better than that America edition on the ROG front. But this, I have to say, they've done a nice job improving the tough. Um, it, this is, uh, then you know, the more I look at the tough, the more it grows on me. I still think I prefer the founders though. But when I get one of those, we'll see. Um, but here we go. Uh, just like I said. Um, okay. So obviously that's, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So you have 18 on the Strix. It's, I can find a photo of that. On the Strix is a 24 design. Okay. So instead of, um, all right. So the Strix is better in that regard. Let me see what else is different based on the photo I have here of the Strix. Okay. Everything else seems to be, when I put up the video, I'm going to, Put up the uh, board photo so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. All right, okay. So memory is also a four stage, just like on the Strix. I mean, four phase. Um, yeah, so the only main difference is the caps. Okay, one second. So yeah, sorry about that. So for all intensive purposes, the same blocks will fit because uh, it's the same PCB. Um, you, you see, now, I don't have a Founders, so I can't take it apart, but these missing phases, they, they, you know, for 600 watts, they may mean almost absolutely nothing, right? So I don't know how many phase design that the FE is, um, but I'll look into it. So, especially for you guys who are doing the water blocks, just buy the tough, right? Same blocks, save yourself the money. On the 3090 Ti tough, I had flashed the 3090 Ti Strix BIOS. Perfectly fine. Only thing that didn't work was the fans, obviously, right? Because they had one was a liquid cooled with a radiator and the other one was, you know, a three style fan design. But yeah, so I'm gonna put this back together now, do a baseline, see how it goes. And like I said, I'm gonna try to get a hold of the 90 Strix BIOS. And if I can flash it in this video, I will. If I can't, then I'll do a follow up video on that. Okay, guys, um, I recorded the unboxing of it yesterday and took it apart. Uh, I waited a day just to see if Envy Flash would release. Uh, a new version has released. Unfortunately, it doesn't detect the card, so I can't flash the BIOS onto it. Um, oh, yeah, this is not the world's cleanest image. <laughs> um, but I also can't even save the BIOS with the latest GPU-Z. Uh, some folks are able to do it, but 
for some reason with the tough i'm not the only one i just can't so but when i came to advance i was just checking and i did notice that the maximum power draw is 600 watt and the default is 450 and i have an adjustment of um 33 percent uh if i can there's no way i don't have afterburner on this thing uh, all right yeah so i mean that's kind of interesting because I seen the other models that people were posting and it was like 520, uh, which is reflective of what we've seen in reviews. Um, so that's a little bit shocking to me that it says 600. So what I'm going to try to do right away is, where's my afterburner? Okay. So, um, yeah, is that all the way on 33? Yeah, it's all the way at 133. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to run fur mark and I'm just going to see if I can, uh, get this thing to, um, Let's see how many watts it can pull. Oh, yeah. Setup right here is, here is the 1200 Thor 2. I'm sorry, 1200 Thor that's running just the power supply itself. And the power supply in the system is a Thor 1000 version 2, which honestly, I really can't see the difference between the version 2 Thors and the version 1s. They look almost identical, even in componentry from the outside. Looking in, there might be some differences if I took it apart, but honestly, I think it's the same uh, series of power supplies from, um, from what you might call it, from Seasonic. The GPU is drawing 77 watts idle. I hit the slider to 133%. I just want to see how much watts, you know, how much power is going to draw. So I'm going to do 4K 8X MSSA. Thank you. And let's see, 622 watts. So I guess it can go over 600. All right. So it's definitely going over 600. Card's staying pretty quiet, but there you go. So it does go over 600. I wonder if I wonder if they all go over 600 or the ones that are capped to 520 will only do 520. I'm not sure. But let's see. Let me just Actually, you know what? Let me let me set reset it and then save it and see how many watts it draws. Um let me see. Let's try this again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if I reset it, it draws. Yeah, it doesn't go. Yeah, it stays under 500. All right. So that's that. Now, um, let me just run Port Royal with the bone. It's on bone stock. Yeah, it's on bone stock. So let me launch 3D Mark. Yeah, I got a lot of games on Steam. Most of them are not installed on this, unfortunately. So I can't can't really run anything but overall you know the card this is a helios case um, i don't know if you guys can see that i'm gonna swing the camera a little bit um it fits well in the case right so if you had a strix it would go out a little bit more but you know i mean the helios is not a small case but you see where the motherboard eatx cuts off it's not the world's largest card you know it, it fits well um for those of you that are curious to what this is this is the Barrow all-in-one DDC pump with the reserv with the reservoir and all in 360. I like it because you know it's easy to add a card to a loop or in this case a mono block. I have it running Port Royal um, simply because I find that Port Royal doesn't let you clock as high and it tends to be more reflective of actual stability to an extent. Um, so this is all bone stock. Uh, it's Boosted to about 2745 and the temperature is about 55 degrees. It's about 70, 55 Celsius, 57 Celsius. It's not that cool in this room. Um, it's about 74 Fahrenheit. I'm not too sure that isn't Celsius, but it, it's not, it's like mild, I guess. Um, but I don't really hear the cooler, to be honest with you. I do hear the coil whine. So there is coil whine a little bit on this one. Um, but I can't hear the card over the other fan I got going on in the corner here. See, this is the other fan I'm talking about. If I turn off the fans in this room, I can't hear it over my other computer, which is to my right. Um, so it's pretty quiet. And I'm just thinking, let's see, 300, 420 watts? Okay. So, so far I would say that's close to your average loop with the gpu block under full load extended 
Yeah, I think I think most most 3090 Ti blocks were in the like the N50s if you didn't have a massive loop and you had a pretty warm ambient like I do right now. Um, but let's just see how far we can push it real quick. Okay, so um, to memory, let's just do 800 off the bat. I just slide the power all the way. Um, I'm going to be water cooling this card, so for me, I might as well just push all the fans to maximum. Um, I expect that to be pretty loud. It's actually raining pretty loud outside, so I don't know if you hear the rain, but um, I'm going to do plus. Let's just start with 200. I mean, I believe these cards all should clock pretty high, so let's just go for it. Uh, let's see. If I crash right away... I won't be surprised, but I noticed that my fans are not going 100%. So I don't know if the fan control is broken here. Yeah. I don't know if Precision is able to control the fans or not. Let's let that, that load. An error has occurred. Well, there's no way I crashed before it even launched. So, oh, that, that's not right. Let me see. I noticed for some reason I have some issues running 3D Mark. Um, I was trying to run Time Spy uh, earlier when I was messing with it, and it would never launch. I don't know if it's just this particular image I have here. It could be. Let me see if I can get it running and then bring the video back. The next time I launched it, it launched. I don't know why. Uh, but definitely the fan control is not working in precision. Um, but I am boosting to 2940, as you can see. Um, well, 59, yeah, obviously, I, I'm thinking it's not warm enough to affect my boost clock yet. But I'm thinking once I hit maybe 65, it might drop. Yeah, see, once I hit 60, the clock dropped to 2925. So I do need to be under 60. Uh, so let me see if I can get the fan going all the way. I had to use afterburner to do the fan and then <laughs> clock it. So I don't know. The precision is monitoring it and the afterburner is doing the settings. So you can see I'm at 30, 60, um, 55C. I'm pretty sure the moment I hit 60C, it's going to drop. But over 3,000, it's not too bad. I don't know if I'll actually pass. This is plus 250 on the core, 800 on the mem. Um, it's drawing 490 watts, 489 watts. So, yeah, I mean, from what I've seen on reviews, uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I think 3,000 is a good number that I can hit. I don't know how stable it is, but I'm sure there's might be room for me to push a little more, maybe, give or take. Um, if I wasn't powering the fan, that might give me a little more power. Um, like I was saying, you know, um, all these board partners, the PCBs are so similar to this generation that there's no real point to buy like a Strix or, you know, just get the founders. If you can get the founders, just buy the damn founders. That's all I can say. Um, I've looked at some of the reviews. Uh, the Supreme probably has the most impressive layout in terms of the, I think it's like 26 phase, something ridiculous. Um, and then the Strix is 24. The Zotac is like, I think the Zotac might actually be 24 as well. Um, but you know, lower, uh, lower, um, lower amperage. Um, so it's not, it's not the same thing. Um, I, I think in terms of componentry, the, the gigabyte and the Zotac are very similar, um, in terms of the components they used. So, but, oh, and the FE is a 20 phase. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, it's so locked down. They all use the same connector. You're going to get so much, right? Okay. That's not a great score. So. Probably, I think from what other people have done, that's not a great score. It's probably because CPU needs to be, you know, to be honest, this is just running off XMP and it needs to be tuned a bit. Uh, and the RAM is not the fastest either. But let me just take a look at, what did I get here? Okay, so I averaged, oh wow. So you see the core clock is extremely stable. So there's no real, yeah, I think the, the build, the, the componentry is more than enough to handle um, 
the power because it doesn't even change almost 30 60 almost flat line all the way um did drop down i guess when i went over 60 at some point i must have let me see yeah as i i want as i went close yeah as i went over 60 the clock dropped um but that's expected so that means you know ideally keep it under 60 sieve on water um for the most but yeah i mean great card I mean, the 100% fans kind of loud. Not that loud, actually. It's more quiet than some of the 30, 90, 100% fans. Um, but obviously, for daily use, you're never going to hear that like that. So, good build quality. No real complaints. Um, I'm going to... If and when I can flash the Strix BIOS onto it, I'll probably do a follow-up. I don't expect much of a performance difference. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Stay safe. And uh, Oh, yeah. Speaking of which... Um, I will be getting the EK block for this, uh, tough Strix EK block. I, I, I consider the Optimus one, but I kind of have to be convinced that the product will arrive and exist. <laughs> I mean, I know the EK one actually physically exists, just not at people's hands, but I know that the item actually exists and not just in a drawing. So that's one thing. Um, so once I get that blocked, obviously I'll do a video on blocking it and I'll give you my results, etc. So um, with that said, thanks for watching and see you next time.